We're opening up June and it marks the annual observance of Road Safety Awareness Month. Even as we plan to take you on a smooth ride in today's magazine, we know that unfortunate events can happen on the road. So we've planned for that too. Tips for reporting a motor vehicle crash, plus much more. I'm Theodore Henry and welcome to another Wednesday journey with Jamaica Magazine. Your news is first. Is your facility approved for COVID-19 testing? The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, through the JANIC Accreditation or Pre-Accreditation Approval Program, validates labs and point-of-care testing facilities such as medical centers. Accreditation safeguards the quality of test results and the consumer well-being. Use a JANIC Accredited or PAP approved facility for your tests and let's defeat COVID-19 together. Contact the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation. Confirming competence, providing confidence in the marketplace. Today, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, June 2. Starting June 3, all public beaches and rivers will open under strict COVID-19 protocols. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the disclosure during Tuesday's sitting of the House of Representatives. Rivers and beaches that are not under management were ordered closed as part of efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19. No more than 10 persons at a time shall gather in any one area of the beach. So we are encouraging you go with your known group and stay in your known group. Activities at the beach shall be limited to swimming, exercising, sunbathing. No beach parties or group games such as football and vol volleyball will be permitted. Mr. Holness also announced updated COVID-19 measures which will cover the period June 3 to 30. Nightly weekday curfews have been recrafted moving to 9 p.m. Saturday curfews have been extended from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., while Sunday curfews remain at 2 p.m. The stay-at-home order for persons 60 years and older remains in place until June 30. Persons in this group who are fully vaccinated will be exempted from the stay-at-home order. Work-from-home arrangements for public sector entities have also been extended until June 30. Prime Minister Holness says memorial church services will be allowed in keeping with ongoing protocols. Up to 50 persons may now attend regular church services and weddings while maintaining the social distancing rule. The public gathering limit remains at 10, while a maximum of 30 persons may now attend handing over ceremonies, launches, groundbreakings and other government functions. Existing orders governing markets, funerals, burials, places of entertainment and transportation remain unchanged. The government is cognizant of the devastating impact that the pandemic has had on the entertainment industry and the large number of persons who depend on the industry for their livelihoods. We are engaged in discussions with the industry with a view to agreeing the appropriate protocols that could facilitate a limited reopening of the industry in the summer. In the meantime, persons entering Jamaica who have been fully vaccinated will benefit from a reduced quarantine requirement. Prime Minister Holness says the new controlled re-entry requirement will see these persons staying in quarantine for eight days instead of the previous 14-day rule. Travelers are still expected to present a negative COVID-19 test. The ongoing travel ban on certain countries were updated. Given concerns about more transmissibility of variant strains of the virus, the travel, the travel restrictions for South American countries, Brazil, Chile, Peru, Colombia, Argentina, and Paraguay, as well as for India and Trinidad and Tobago, is also being extended until June 30th, 2021. And still in Parliament Tuesday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is urging persons in the priority vaccination groups to get their second dose of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. The group includes persons over 50, the security forces, healthcare workers, Department of Correctional Services, PICA, Jamaica Fire Brigade and teachers. I must emphasize how critical it is for persons who have received their first dose of the vaccine to get their second dose. The level of protection from only one dose is significantly lower than the level provided by taking both doses and it, is, and it declines rapidly after 120, 
after 120 days. Mr. Holness's call comes as he and wife, Member of Parliament, Juliet Holness, received their second and final dose recently. They joined the just over 22,000 Jamaicans who have received their two doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. So far, just over 155,000 Jamaicans have received their first shot. In other news, the National Disaster Committee has been instructed to direct its attention to a number of priority areas as the country prepares for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. The directive came Tuesday as Prime Minister Andrew Holness launched the island's National Hurricane Preparedness Campaign under the theme Hurricane Readiness in Trying Times. The priority areas include readiness of shelters and shelter operations, cleaning of priority drain infrastructure, as well as enhanced public education and awareness. Like we have done successfully in the past year, our strategy must be to anticipate, plan and prepare for the threat, not to panic if or when it materializes. Let's remember the tagline, disasters happen, be prepared. Meanwhile, Director of the Meteorological Service of Jamaica, Evan Thompson, says the 2021 season is expected to be an active one. In the best case scenario, we are expecting to see about 13 tropical storms, with six becoming hurricanes and three being major hurricanes. However, in the worst case, we could have at least 20 tropical storms, with 10 becoming hurricanes, and of these, five could be major hurricanes. We can see that what we are expecting is a season that is significantly more active than a normal season. So these are no longer normal times. And finally, over 5,000 farmers in and around Clarendon are in line to benefit directly and indirectly from training being provided by five farmer field schools. The schools are to be established in the upper Rio Mino watershed in the parish. A $21.7 million contract was signed Friday for the design and implementation of the schools, which are to begin in June. Isratech Jamaica Limited will execute the seven-month project, which will see them liaising with RADA to select farmers and farms to be used for demonstration purposes. Isratech will also conduct community sensitization and awareness workshops, as well as select training sites and prepare a logistics plan. The overarching aim is to empower our farmers by providing them with the necessary knowledge and skills which will build resilience to the impacts of climate-related hazards. The farmers will be trained to disseminate their knowledge to other farmers in the communities, and this is all aimed at improving overall farming practices. The Farmer Field Schools Initiative falls under the Adaptation Program and Financing Mechanism for the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. As we aim to make our road spaces safer for motorists and pedestrians, we package some road safety tips from the experts. Here's the road and you next. Pedestrians, it is only safe to cross this designated part of the road if you follow the road rules. Never attempt to cross before the indication is given and do not try to beat the oncoming traffic which has the green light. You have overhead bridges and overhead bridges are safe areas that are provided for pedestrians to cross. What we are seeing are pedestrians dashing across dual carriageways and then leaping over concrete medians. That is a no-no. We have had persons who have lost their lives doing that. And I am now appealing to pedestrians to do the right thing and access the overhead bridges that are provided in order to save your own life. Where there is no overhead bridge or crossing sign, use the pedestrian crossing with caution. Monitor the lights and cross when it's safe to do so. 
that is a dangerous practice and a 99.9% .9 chance of this happening. The amount of kinetic energy that comes upon your body, that is going to determine whether or not you survive. There are several signs. Road signs are the language of the road. You have informational signs, directional signs, warning signs, and you have enforcement signs. Enforcement signs are erected upright are those that are drawn on the road surface. For example, you have stop sign, one-way sign, and it points in the direction where the one-way is. No U-turn, no parking, no right turn, no entry, a number of signs. If there is no sign that are erected upright, you will see yellow, yellow markings painted on curb walls that constitute no parking and you should not park in those areas. You park where white, white painting is drawn on those curb walls. Those are areas where parking is permitted. You have continuous white lines that are drawn on road surface. No motorist should drive to the right of a continuous white line. There are some other signs, especially like along Nutsford Boulevard, where the dual carriageway is, but there is any elevated median. You see something looking like a zebra crossing. Those crossing the picks, a median, but a median that is not elevated. If you disobey a stop sign, it carries a fine of $4,000 or six demerit points. If you disobey the traffic light, the red light, that too carries $4,000 a fine or six demerit points. On the approach of a traffic light, for example, half a tree road, Chelsea Avenue, by GIS there, there is no filter light. You are to obey the light and whenever you get green, you are to proceed. These lights are so configured that they allow for a pedestrian to cross. So when that red light is on, pedestrians are crossing. So that's why a filter light is not put in. When approaching a roundabout, you are to yield to the person to the right. Right? Always allow for that person to go first. A similar thing with a heel sign, a giveaway sign. You are to yield to the person and allow that person to proceed. If you happen to overtake, you are to do so if the way is clear. And once you complete that maneuver, you are to get back to the left lane and remain there. We have persons anticipating the light. You have those that are anticipating the green. And even before the green comes on, they are off. And you have others who are beating the amber in order to go by as well. And I should tell you this, red means you are to stop, amber means you are to prepare to stop, and green means you are to go, if the way is clear. And remember, always wear your seatbelt. As much as we'd like a reality that's free from motor vehicle crashes, sometimes they seem inevitable. After all, accidents do happen. Now, if you ever find yourself in a motor vehicle accident, here's what you should do next. You know how they say accidents do happen, unexpectedly and often unintentionally. Though road safety experts no longer define these unfortunate incidents involving motor vehicles as accidents, they're certainly never intended. Unfavorable weather conditions, objects on the road, your miscalculation while driving, or another driver can cause crashes, even for the best defensive drivers. That's exactly why it's important to know how to respond in these situations. So, what do you do at that exact moment? What should be your next steps? And when and how should you file a police report?
for the number of reports that, are, that come to this station. Um, perhaps it's on a basis of about 10 to 15 per day. That's the number of accidents per day. So after our road traffic accident, um, person should first try to clear the roadway if they are obstructing the traffic for other uh, motorists. Secondly, um, drivers are expected to exchange vehicle documents and the document should include their registration certificate, certificate of fitness, insurance certificate and your driver's license information. Those are the essential four pieces of information that should be provided to both parties after an accident. Contact information is optional, but you have cases where a person tries to settle outside insurance and that's now a civil matter. It's an agreement between both parties, so if they want to exchange um, contact information, that's also optional depending on the intention that they have in terms of fixing the vehicle outside insurance or what. Your next step? Making a police report about the collision. This is always a good idea. That way you have proof of exactly what's happened and the scope of any injuries. In terms of our approach as police officers for a motor vehicle accident, um, first the, the critical thing is to check for, for injuries, make sure that um, persons are okay. Um, if there's a need for persons to be assisted to the hospital for any um, sort of treatment, we should make sure we render assistance to persons in need of that care first. Um, secondly, we check for um, the damage for the vehicles, make sure there is no obstruction um, along the roadway and then we can treat with the documents or the exchange of particulars between both parties. After making a report of a motor vehicle accident, um, the next step that persons are advised to do is to make a, make a report to their insurance company and that's for another motorist as it relates to a pedestrian um, who are persons who are injured they are also advised to get the assistance of an attorney to file a personal injury um, claim against the, the party that is liable in the accident. For follow-up visits, um, what we do, we have cases where persons are, are seriously injured, some of which are not able to make it to the station to give a report in the first instance. So what we try to do, whether the persons are hospitalized, we ensure that visits are made and that the person's conditions are updated as we go along. As we, through the investigation, we ensure that the person's conditions are updated along the, the procedure. But, are you always required to report traffic collisions? Not in all cases, a report must be filed um, for accidents. Um, we have situations where it could be a very minor mishap. For example, someone could be reversing from their garage, they could bump their gate. So in those cases, it's not necessary for them to make a report. But for other situations involving another motorist or a case where a pedestrian or a property is damaged, a report is expected to be made because persons at times are expected to make claims, whether from their insurance company or their attorneys, based on the damage received or the injuries they've sustained. Reports from the Road Safety Unit shows that up to April 26, 139 lives have been cut short because of road crashes this year, with over 100 of those being males. And for the corresponding period last year, 136 lives were lost in road crashes. On a more global level, studies from the World Health Organization WHO show that approximately 1.35 million people die each year as a result of road traffic crashes, and 3% of most countries' gross domestic product is spent on road traffic crashes. The most common cause of motor vehicle accidents from my understanding is mostly impatience on the part of some of the drivers and a lack of knowledge as to how the roadways should be used. And I also believe the implementation of, of traffic signs at various areas would also aid the process because most drivers are not aware of what to do at various parts of the roadway. In the face of such figures, even the most careful driver can suddenly encounter a bit of bad fortune on the road. You know that scene. Decisions can be like car accidents, sudden and full of consequences. So how about making the right decision to be responsible road users today?
The Cannabis Licensing Authority is committed to supporting the creation of a regulatory framework for the growth and sustainability of Jamaica's medical cannabis industry. We carefully assess application forms for businesses and individuals interested in becoming partners in the industry. Along with other ministries, departments of government and agencies, the authority endeavors to preserve the integrity of the industry through compliance. This is all done to ensure that the industry is operating in conformity with Jamaica's international obligations. Call or visit our website to find out more about the work of the Cannabis Licensing Authority. We always aim to help government create an inclusive Jamaica for all through empowering and sharing information and knowledge. Today is no different as we share information on how the availability of assistive devices are helping the disabled community. What is a screen reader? A screen reader is a piece of assistive technology that captures information from your screen and converts it to speech or as braille on a braille display. Are there different types of screen readers? So for the Windows-based computers, there are three types of screen readers that are used. There's the most famous one, JAWS, Job Access with Speech. There is NVDA, that means non-visual desktop access, and there is Narrator that is built into Windows. So for this demonstration, I'll be using JAWS. And to, if JAWS is already installed on your system, all you need to do is go to your desktop, press J for JAWS, and press Enter, and it will announce that it has been loaded. Right. So. I'll be also using Microsoft Word to demonstrate how we type and how the screen reader works with us when we are typing. So I am now going to go ahead and type something and you will hear the screen reader reading what I type letter for letter. Right, and if I want to hear what I type, I use the arrow keys on the keyboard and it will tell me what I type. Hi, my name is Damien. Hi, my name is Damien. And that was what I typed. So this is how the screen reader works along with Microsoft Word and any other program that we use on the computer. Also, for our mobile devices, yes, they too also have screen readers. So for the iOS, there's one called voice over and on the android based system there is google talkback and samsung also has their own screen reader that is called voice assistant so for this demonstration i'll be using google talkback on a mobile phone and how the screen reader works is if i put my finger anywhere on the screen and there's an icon there then the screen reader will announce that icon. Let's try this. Chrome. Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold to long press. Actions available. You swipe up then right to view. Okay, so the icon that I touched was Chrome. And after it mentioned that I touched Chrome, it gave me some actions that I could carry. Out. So if I double tap, it would have opened Chrome. And it also gave me some other actions that I could carry out if I wanted to. Where can screen readers be accessed? Well, for the computer, you can purchase JAWS. It's quite expensive. It's about 1200 US for the package. You can purchase it from Freedom Scientific. Also, for the mobile devices, you, once you purchase the device, the screen reader comes built into the device. So all you have to do is go into the accessibility setting and turn it on. What is a white cane? A white cane is a device that is used by both blind and visually impaired persons to navigate their way in any open space. How the white cane works is that you extend the hand with the cane out in front of you and while walking it will pick up surfaces and obstacles that may be in the way. 
Where can white canes be accessed? If you're blind, you can purchase a white cane at the Jamaica Society for the Blind for $3,000. What is a prosthesis? A prosthesis is a device used to replace a lost limb. Are there different types of prosthesis? Some of the different types of prosthesis would be upper limb, below knee, and above knee. This is an example of an above knee prosthesis. The components here, socket, a liner that goes in here, which is this part, which is this, a flexible knee, stainless steel titanium pylon, foot shell, carbon fiber blade. That's, that's your, that's the, those are the components for a, a prosthesis, above knee, yes? I'm going to show you what below knee prosthesis is. Here, here we are. Again, this is your liner, which locks, fits onto your stump. This is a below knee. Fits onto the stump, fits into the socket, which is this. Pylon, carbon, carbon fiber shell. Tips to care for your prosthesis. Normal cleaning tips to take care of the prosthesis would be uh, cleaning it with a non-abrasive cleaner, such as a hand soap. And do, that's basically what it is. Normal, normal um, uh, adjustments and things like that will be done by a prosthetic technician at the clinic. The other part of it is easy. It's a snap in, snap out, and he's going to show you how he, how he takes it off. So go ahead, take it off. Comes off. This is your leg. Puts it back on. Locks into place. It's good to go. Where can I get more information or help? More information can be had at the Surgery Prostate Clinic at the Sir John Golding Rehab Center, Mona, Kingston. A production of the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. As we observe this year's Road Safety Awareness Month, here's a message from Knut Hare, the director of the Road Safety Unit, helping us to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Obedience, better than sacrifice. Do the right thing. Right? Are you, are you going to ensure that you buckle up in the motor vehicle? And the persons in the motor vehicle behind your back, your passengers, are they able club? Are you going to ensure that? We are, are you going to give yourself adequate time to reach your destiny so that you don't have to be in any ears, so that you don't help to clog up the health sector? Nobody should be going to the hospitals because of traffic crashes. Nobody they are preventable, they are avoidable. We can make better choice than that. Today's show ends here, but as always, there's more information from us coming your way tomorrow. But until then, past episodes can be seen on our YouTube channel, and while you're at the convenience of the internet, Visit the GIS website and follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. From all of us here, enjoy the rest of the evening. And I'm Theodore Henry. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.